Hello Internet and welcome back to Construction Planet. So from today onwards we will start learning how to create a project dashboard in Microsoft Power BI. So keep watching. In this very first video we will see how to install Microsoft Power BI desktop client on your PC, see a little bit of its interface, see the underlying mechanics, how the Microsoft Power BI works and different tabs available to you. So the very first question, what is Microsoft Power BI? Microsoft Power BI is a very powerful data visualization and data modeling tool. By using it, you can get a deep inside your data and you can visualize it in a very presentable way. You can also explore insight presented by your data, which normally you cannot see in the terms of numbers and values. The Microsoft Power BI client is available in many tiers. Some are paid, some are free and we will be working on the Microsoft Power BI desktop client which is free till the recording of this video. So very first, let us see how to install that Microsoft Power BI client. Before starting with Power BI, you need to have the Power BI on your PC installed. For this purpose, you need to go to the official website of Power BI from Microsoft that is powerbi.com. When you reach on powerbi.com, from the product menu, you have several options for different type of licenses available for Power BI. The way how Power BI works is you do all your modeling and visualizations on Power BI desktop client. Then you publish that data to Power BI online server for which you need to have the Power BI Pro license. If you do not have Power BI Pro or Premium license, you cannot upload your dashboards and reports to the web server from where you can share your data or reports to others. But for us, the Power BI desktop client will suffice the purpose. We will do our modeling and reports on desktop client and we do not require to publish that data to the, to the web server or to share with other people. We only want to dashboard that can be included in our PowerPoint presentations or other sort of stuff for which Power BI desktop client will suffice. And till the date of recording of this video, the Power BI desktop is free. So how can you download this Power BI desktop is from the products menu, go to the Power BI desktop, then click the download free icon this will take you to the microsoft store it, it will ask you if you want to open it in microsoft store if you have windows then click on microsoft store and it will open up the microsoft store window from where you can download and install the microsoft power bi desktop client for free it will take some time for downloading the microsoft power bi desktop client depending on your internet connection and speed since i have already installed the power bi desktop client on my pc therefore you can see there is a launch button here instead if you have not installed the power bi desktop you will see a download button here you have to just click the download button and it will start the download process and install the power bi desktop client on your pc we will begin this tutorial with the end in mind and for this purpose i would like you to explain the actual dashboard that we will be creating throughout this tutorial series. This will be the monthly performance dashboard of an arbitrary project by the name of Project Compass for the month of May 2020. Being spent a lot of time in the project planning and control field throughout my career, what I would like to include in my performance dashboard are two types of data. One will be the performance data that will show the project governing board or committee how the project is performing and the other type of data will be the actionable items on which the project control group or project governance board or project sponsor whoever is viewing this dashboard can take some action to bring that project back to its original path keeping that in mind the very first data point that, that i would like to include in my dashboard is the overall project budget and the cash flow till date this will give an idea in the monetary values how much amount is left to be spent or to be incurred on the project the other two things are the spi and cpi the spi is the schedule performance index and cpi is the cost performance index of this project these are two kpis which show how the project is performing as per its timeline and as per its allocated budget the definition and the calculation method for spi and cpis are not part of these tutorials i assume that if you are viewing this tutorial from a project planner or controls point of view you already know how to calculate those two things if you do not know or if you want to further understand how these two parameters are calculated and what are their importance just drop a comment below and i will make a separate video on that the second group of variable is the rfi status rfi stands for request for information 
So the request for information are generated by different stakeholders or different parties in the project towards other stakeholders when they want to get information on certain aspects of the project. The pie chart shows you the total open and closed RFIs till date. Then these RFIs are segregated by their domains that are structure, finishes, mechanical and electrical. Then in numbers you have the open RFIs by different stakeholders and then below in the dial gauges you have the response times from the different stakeholders on that RFIs. Like for clients you can see that the minimum response time is 3 days, the maximum is 10 days and the average is 6.67 days. While for the project, a 3 days standard time is set to respond for the RFIs. This is the actionable data point from which the project governance board can take actions and ask the different stakeholders to evaluate the response time on the RFIs and take actions to curtail the response time. In the second group of issues, you have the change request status. Change requests are generated by different stakeholders throughout the project to account for the changes happening in the project. In the pie chart, you can see the monetary value of different statuses of the change request that is total approved amount, pending amount and rejected amount of change requests. Then again these change requests are segregated by the domains that are mechanical structure, finishes and electrical. In number form you have the total number of change requests raised by any stakeholders. Then below you have the CR amount by type like the total value in terms of additional items, uh, total value in terms of sub substituted items or other options. The third group of visual is a simple stack bar chart of the cash flows which will show you the actual versus planned value in different months occurring on the project. Then below there are the two tables. The first table show you the pending tasks till date occurring on the project and the second table show you the task of the half year that needs to be done or completed in order to keep the project on track. This is the overall picture of the dashboard that we will be creating throughout this series of tutorials. Now you know how to install the Microsoft Power BI desktop client. Let's see some of its interface. When you will open the Power BI desktop client, the first dialog that will appear is this is what is shown on this screen. It will ask you to sign in or try for free. We do not want to click any of these buttons because we would we only want to use the desktop client without any online features. So we will just cross out this dialog box. Behold, we are into our Power BI desktop client and this will look similar to the other Microsoft Office or Office 365 applications. On the top, you have a ribbon with different commands and options. On the left hand side, you have three modules available to you. The first one is the report where you will you design all your visuals. The second one is for data where all your data files are stored, your tables and worksheets, etc. And the third one is the modeling tab, which is the most important where you will create relationships between your tables and different fields. We will dive in each of them in a bit. On the right hand side, by default, you have three panes already open and available to you. The first one is the field, which will show all your uh, data and fields that are imported into Power BI. The second pane is for visualizations. By default, there are several types of visualizations available to you. It is from where you will select the visual that you want to apply into your report, modify its fields, data, its visual characteristics, its formatting and different things. Then you have the filter pane from where you will filter out your data applied to the different visualizations. In the, in the middle, you have your working space. Now to understand the underlying mechanics of Microsoft Power BI, we need to learn what is the relationship between different modules of Microsoft Power BI. For this purpose, I would like you to imagine yourself as a chef and creating a burger. So when you create a burger, it is divided into different steps, right? But in the very first step, you will gather all your ingredients that are required to make that burger. In the second step, you will plan in your head what will the assembled burger look like and what is the relationship of different ingredients of that burger. And in the third stage, you will present the complete formulated burger. These three stages work very similarly in Microsoft Power BI. There is the one module which is the data module. It is where you will store all your ingredients. Like you will store your ketchup bottle, your mayonnaise bottle, your minced meat, your buns. And this is the space where you will also perform minor steps of cooking up your ingredient to bring it in the final form. Like you will convert your minced meat to a burger patty, right? Similarly, 
there's a data module in the Microsoft Power BI where you import all your data sources into that module and perform tasks to make that data machine friendly. In the initial stage, the Excel sheets or database is human friendly. Human can easily read it, but you have to convert it into a machine friendly view so that you can make queries at different intervals of time. So this is the data module. Now, in the second step of the program making process, you visualize in your head what will the assembled worker will look like. So in the model tab, you will work on this purpose of creating linkages between different ingredients of your data. Like your one field is related to the other field in an Excel sheet or one data query is related to other data query. This is the modeling tab where you will perform all these linkages. Now third and the final module and third and the final step in our burger making process is assembling the complete burger in its place. This is the visualization tab where you will perform your visual aspects of report or dashboard. You will bring your data sources and you will connect them to a visual in Microsoft Power BI. So let's look into the different modules in the Microsoft Power BI. After I explain you how this interface works, let us just connect the different modules available on our left hand side to the metaphors defined earlier in my briefing. So the visual module will be the place where you have shown your finished burger, right? And the data module will be the place where you store all your ingredients like onion, cheese slices, ketchups and etc etc. And the modeling module will be the place where you build your relationships or your linkages like your bottom one will come first then it will be the sauce then it will be the patty then it will be the cheese slice then it will be the vegetables and etc etc so modeling tab will be the place where you will build all this linkage that's it for today's video thank you for watching it and you want to get notifications of upcoming videos in this series press the subscribe button and click the bell icon thank you